All right, hello everybody. Let's talk about some cardio today. I have a little uh, plaque up at my gym that says cardio is hardio. You know, it's funny. I don't agree with the plaque though. Like personally, I love cardio. Um, I mostly started out in physical fitness as a gym rat. I mean, loved working out, loved lifting weights, loved hitting it hard, training heavy. Um, Pebble here, she absolutely is a gym rat in her own right and uh, loves to get in these videos and that's cool. But you know, when I did my very first bodybuilding show, I was around 27 years old and uh, I'd never done any cardio, like I didn't see the point really, you know, times have changed greatly. I mean, this was in the, when was this? This would have been in the, yeah, 1990s, 1992, so early 1990s. Um, it really wasn't the era of people going to the gym, jumping on the treadmills and uh, getting on the bikes and things. I mean, some people did, but a lot of people didn't. Um, you know, naturally there were people that did cardio exclusively only for exercise, you know, the runners, um, cyclists, uh, triathlon was kind of getting going then, but it was mostly just uh, either or. I mean, now we know better and that's a good thing, but I started doing cardio for my first bodybuilding show because that was conventional wisdom. It was like, if you're going to train to get very lean and ripped on a stage, I mean, as I point out in my great book, you can't outrun a poor diet. That's absolutely true. I mean, getting lean, ripped, shredded, whatever you want to call it, absolutely comes down to diet. But you do have to do your cardio too. And, you know, I mean, the old hand-me-down logic of physique competitions was at that time, basically continue with your workouts when you're prepping for a contest. Don't go necessarily the failure because you don't want to cut into too much muscle because you are dieting. And, and that's true. I mean, there's, we haven't learned that much from that. I mean, that really is true. And then you diet, as I said, and then you do your steady rate cardio, which we called long, slow distance or LSD. And steady rate and LSD training is essentially the same thing. It's just a low to moderate level of cardio, not too low. And that's kind of the point of this video is we've gotten a little bit carried away with either or mentality again with cardio. I'll get back to that in a second. But, you know, at that point when I started doing it, I did the life cycle. Um, I still have a life cycle. I'm sitting right next to it right now at my house. I still love a life cycle. I mean, but that's what I did. And when I started out, I don't know, I can't remember, 15 or 20 minutes before all my workouts. And I think me and my training partner, Big Jimmy, we, uh, um, you know, he wasn't Big Jimmy. He was actually a lightweight. And I'm going to send this to him. But you know what? He was a ripped lightweight. And I like to call him Big Jimmy. Anyway, still my buddy. Um, we, we would meet in the morning, jump on the life cycles. And we built up to maybe 45, 50 minutes, I think it was. And uh, for people that didn't do a lot of cardio, I mean, he did more because he was always in the surfing, but you know, that was enough. I mean, it wasn't super easy, but it wasn't hard. And we, you know, it's called steady rate, long, slow distance. So anywhere from say 20 minutes to say an hour or even longer is steady rate um, cardio. You know, your heart rate's typically around 70, maybe 80%, probably not that high, but you're not huffing and puffing. But anyway, I kind of fell in love with it at the time. I love the sweat. I love just the, um, you know, the meditative effect of cardio. I mean, even back then, I just sit on that life cycle. And if Jim wasn't there, I would just, uh, you know, sometimes I'd get there before him or whatever. But, you know, I just would zone out, stare straight ahead. You know, I mean, it's just meditative. And from that point on, I really have kept cardio in my life. And I even took it further later on, getting out of bodybuilding and shifting more to triathlons and running and then doing more cardio than strength. And uh, I think we go through phases with our fitness and everything. And, um, you know, that's great. Now I'm kind of doing more, a lot of strength and cardio, you know, as a balance, not, you know, doing triathlons or anything. I just love cardio and I love strength. But anyway, 
my point is that I, you know, the cardio is hardio thing at the gym is a joke because I like it, but a lot of people don't and, or a lot of people only do it. And that's, this video isn't for them. This is for the people that just don't really want to do the cardio. And I can tell you though, like there's two main reasons for cardio. The number one reason is, is you want to work your cardiorespiratory system. I mean, we want to have a strong heart. Um, I don't know that this, that message is necessarily for the people listening to the video though, because the people that know that get that. But the people that are into physique stuff or trying to lean out or trying to get cut, I mean, all those things. Yes, you can't outrun a poor diet. Absolutely. I wrote the book on that. But you have to do your cardio. Like cardio is a huge part of getting leaner. Now, I'm all about steps. Like I love counting steps. I just think it gets me moving. The idea behind it is we're more active in between our workouts when we focus on that, absolutely. But some people only use their steps as a mean of their cardio. It's not the same thing, okay? So for example, the average person at the average weight is going to burn around, say, three to four calories per minute at rest. When you start moving around a little bit, it goes to like four to five calories per minute at rest, okay? so. Like that's not a lot, right? But when you jump up and start doing cardio and you get into that steady rate moderate zone, like around the 70 to 80%, you're not huffing and puffing. You can carry on a conversation, but you're, you're working a little bit to do that, you know? And I don't even want you focused on heart rates and all that necessarily. I think that's good, but that's not the point of this video. The point of the video is like, we have to kind of get out of our extremes of not really doing any and only counting steps, which really is in cardio because you're not doing it continuous enough and you're not doing it hard enough. And the people that have jumped on the HIT bandwagon, high intensity interval training that just, well, I'm gonna do that two to three times a week, okay. But you know what? Conventional wisdom has always said that, it said that if you, basically put together your strength training program and do some nice steady rate moderate cardio in between, that's like a great recipe to get lean, all right? So we, I really want people to start thinking more about that steady rate because if we do it, if we're around that 70 or 80% or moderate, now we're burning closer to eight to 10 calories per minute. I mean, more intensity, more calories, but that is like tripling your output. Now, here's the other beauty of it. When you are staying, keeping your heart rate elevated above 20 minutes, well, now you're getting into fat burning a lot more. When you get to 30 minutes of cardio, now it shifts to 50% fat, 50% carbohydrates, roughly, for most people. When you start getting beyond that 30 minute and start getting into the 45 minutes, now it's shifting even more to fat burn. So it's really critical to get down into fat burning, it, to do the steady rate longer cardio. Like I always say, like, look, get in longer than 30 minutes. And it's because we get into fat burning longer. Now look, I'm an exercise physiologist, so there's gonna be people that are gonna go, wait a minute, at the end of the day, if you're burning more than you're, you're um, taking in, you're gonna lose weight, you're gonna burn fat. That's true. I'm not disputing that. That's absolutely true. What I'm saying is you can also, when you're doing all these things, so I'm comparing apples to apples, get into fat burning zones more by doing that steady rate cardio. In other words, yes, that's true. And if you want to get to fat burning sooner, do that steady rate cardio, okay? I mean, I hope I've convinced you it's to me it's a no-brainer like it feels good to me to do it it doesn't feel good not to do it all right so look 30 minutes most days of the week try to elevate your heart rate into what feels like a five or six maybe even seven on a 10 scale so not super hard just get that heart rate elevated don't just walk around the block I love walking. Matter of fact, I just finished a three mile walk this evening. One that had some energy to burn, recovering from hernia surgery. Everything's good, by the way, almost ready to be released. 
So I'm not doing anything much more intense than that now, but I went for a nice three mile walk, walked Hazel, then added on a little bit more. Personally, I love it, love to move, all right? So just try to get in that steady rate cardio. I promise you, I'm gonna just like, I'm gonna plead with your vanity. If you wanna get lean, do more cardio. You gotta watch your diet, of course. But if you wanna get lean, do more cardio. Now, if you do too much high intensity cardio, that's the problem with the HIIT training. Now you're getting anaerobic, so you start cutting into that muscle supply a little bit. And that's something that some of these guys aren't telling you. I know it's a new craze, and there's nothing wrong with intervals. If you're an endurance athlete, you need to do intervals to get faster. Absolutely. But look, a lot of people got into the HIIT training because they're just, they get bored doing the, the steady rate cardio. I mean, that's the bottom line. And then they found study after study to justify it. Look, got no issues with it. I like doing intervals too. I'm just saying there is a place for steady rate cardio. All right, hope this helps. Please hit the like button and I will talk to you later.